Hey everyone, welcome back. This week, we're swinging back around to Robert Oster to take a look at Robert Oster River of Fire. Now, for those not familiar with the ink, you may be thinking that it's just another blue ink with red sheen. And with that, you're partially right. River of Fire is a green primary with a subtle red sheen. It is part of the Robert Oster basic ink rundown, and it does help the green team catch up with the blue team as far as the sheer number of inks that Robert Oster offers. And yes, it does come in the standard 50 mil plastic bottle, and yes, the ink to dollar ratio is just right, as is all the other colors. So in a brand with so many different inks, does River of Fire bring enough to the table to set itself apart? Or does it just get lost in the crowd? And for that, let's go ahead and take a look at the writing sample. So after seeing what the Atelier Lusso did with Serenity Blue, I figured we could bring it back out and see what we would get from River of Fire. The flow from this pen is nice and it's even, which helps me get a good consistency when I'm looking at the different aspects of each ink. Now, here on page 33 of our Tomoe River Paper Endless Works notebook, we've got our writing sample. One of the many reasons I use Tomoe River Paper for these samples is that I want to give the ink the best chance to show off everything it has to offer. And I was hoping in this case that it would mean that the sheen of River of Fire would definitely come through. I've got to say, though, that part kind of leaves me feeling slightly let down here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So in the written portion of the sample, you can see that the shading is very pleasing and it's got good flow coming out of the nib. And that's kind of the case across all three papers I was writing with, with this ink. And the other commonality, the sheen just isn't there. Once again, going back to the writing, Good shading, no sheen. And here on Claire Fontaine Triumph, good shading, no sheen. I will say though, the dry time is really good. This ink is fully dry by the 22nd mark, and that does help make it a good daily carry ink, especially with the shading that we get from it which coming back around to the shading, when we take a look at the swabs, we can see that we're fully saturated by the third pass. And just to let you know, with each pass, I do use a new swab to make sure that we're getting even marks. I must say that overall, I really do like the darker shade of green that we're getting. And it's a good quality to have, and I'm consistently getting it from this nib. To get a good sense of the sheen though, we really have to go to our ink blot, which I must admit, I kind of let it get a little bit out of hand, but that's what happens when you get somewhat carried away and put a few too many drops of ink on the paper. And like I was saying, at the very edge of the darkest spots, you can see some of that sheen, which honestly, I would have loved to see a lot more of that sheen in this ink. But overall, it's a nice shade. And I'm really interested to see how it holds up to water. All right, so breaking out the Rhodia dot pad, we've got the writing sample. Standard name of the ink, name of the pen, random gibberish, and some cross hatching. So let's go ahead, take a little bit of a music break, and soak the paper.
okay, now overall this isn't bad. It's definitely not good, but I've seen worse. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So this is definitely an ink where you can get it a little wet and be okay, but don't expect to throw your notebook into a lake and have this page be all right. The end result would not be a good one. And besides, why are you throwing your notebook in a lake? That just seems kind of wasteful. But all in all, I was actually expecting a slightly worse performance, so I'm happy with what I'm seeing here, and eh, I still think that's actually a kind of a win for this ink, considering it's actually still partially on the page. So let's go ahead and move over to the final thoughts. As far as green inks go, I really like the shade that we're getting here, and with it being a Robert Oster ink, I know I'm getting a quality product. With it being $17 for 50 mil, and with it being a mainline ink, I also don't have to worry about it completely disappearing off the shelf. I've got to say that I've never really been a big fan of ink FOMO. That aside, though, I have to say that you've got good dry time, shading, feather control, flow, and quantity, and it's a good ink overall, but where this ink gets lost in the crowd has to be the fact that there's so many green inks out on the market that I just don't feel it does enough to set itself apart, and I think that's a little bit of a shame. So that's it for this video. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow the Inkdwell on Twitter and Instagram. Also, you could always join our Discord. And for those who are podcast inclined, why don't you give Two Guys Zero Planners a listen? It's a good stationary podcast that I think you'll like. And yes, I am biased about that. So it is what it is. But as always, links are down below. And I'll see you next week.